What's up guys, so today we're going to talk about TVs on the market that are available in 2022. All different kinds of TVs now, QLED, OLED, LED, let's dive right into it. Okay guys, so the first TV that you absolutely need to avoid in 2022 is LED TVs. So these TVs are old technology now, they've been around for many, many years. Uh, LED TVs are not self-illuminating, they have a backlight to make them work. Uh, the pixels will sit behind the actual screen itself and make a combination of red, green and blue to produce white. Okay, so the way LED TVs work is they have a backlight behind the pixels. This means that essentially if you watch a movie and the movie finishes and the screen fades to black, that entire backlight still needs to be on during that black screen so you're not getting a true representation of what black actually is. So there are massive drawbacks to having a backlight in a TV. Um, you can get DSE called dirty screen effect and essentially because the TV is lit from the edges inwards, the light then produces shadows in the center of the screen. So you can see uh, strange black artifacts in the middle of the screen, sometimes around the outside. It depends exactly how your TV uh, is lit, whether it's edge lit or you know lit with a full array LED setup. Um, backlights are an absolute no in televisions. Avoid backlights. So this device here, you can see that it's still using a backlight there. And that's why those uh, pixels, even though they're turned off, you can still see them coming through. Um, this means if you're if you're you were playing a PlayStation or whatever, and you've just unplugged the HDMI and the screen says no signal, and you can you can quite clearly see the screen is still turned on, and you can see it, although the screen is black, it looks kind of grey almost, and you you can just see through the backlight that the TV is still powered on. Next on the list, we have OLED TVs. Now, OLED TVs, my personal favorite. They also happen to be the most expensive TV on the market right now. Um, they have self-illuminating pixels. This means they need absolutely no backlight whatsoever to function. Um, this way, they can produce deeper colors and true blacks. So because they don't need a backlight, let's say you're watching a movie, uh, let's say, for example, Interstellar, and you're watching a scene uh, in space, and what you can see on the screen there is the black color of space, then the pixel will turn itself completely off to show you that black color. Um, it does not need a backlight, so you will not see any gray faded color or anything like that over in the background. Um, this means that the colors you see on the screen are actually deeper colors as well. So let's say you're seeing a red uh, color on the screen next to a black color. That means the colors you're seeing in red are popping more in contrast to those deeper blacks. The only downside to OLED TVs is that they have uh, image retention, otherwise known as screen burn-in, and they are limited in the peak brightness in nits that they can output. These are the downsides. Um, they do suck. I mean, screen burn-in is one of the most, is probably the worst problem that we have today in image t you know, TV history. Um, basically, what that means is if there is an image on a screen for an extended period of time, that will then burn itself into the screen and become ingrained into the permanent uh, display itself. So very frustrating. This tends to affect mostly uh, football users who have a you know a counter, uh, the timer in the top left corner. Uh, nowadays, the TV companies are taking steps to actually fade that away or hide the clock in the corner and the score counter. So depends honestly what type of football you're watching, uh, what kind of sport it is, uh, whether the channel are you know taking steps to reduce those uh, effects. So um, yeah, there are drawbacks to OLED, but it is the best one, uh, the best type of technology we have right now for a TV. Another image you can see here, this example, uh, this one is of an OLED panel. On the left side there, you can see the pixels they are on. Obviously, there's a there's a, some kind of like reddy or blue image on the screen. Um, and the pixels to the right, they're actually completely turned off. Um, and this is the benefit of a self-illuminating pixels. This black image that you're seeing here, this one is an OLED display. As you can see, all the pixels are on. Um, don't worry, there's not fingerprints on your screen. You're probably thinking that there, but you can see a couple of pixels, one, two, three, four, about five or six pixels on the screen there are actually on in their dimmest form. Um, now there is actually some content on the screen. If I zoom out here, that's an example of just how smart OLED TVs are. They can turn everything around them off except for the very sub level of pixel where they can even produce that dim brightness. Here is an image that compares the deeper blacks from OLED to LED. So you can really see there on the left side, you're getting the true black and the colors pop more 
And then on LED TV, you can obviously see, uh, you know, the images backlit. So you're getting, you're not really getting a true uh, accurate representation of what the image looks like. Um, this is a huge shame in my opinion. Anyone using an LED TV or a QLED TV is massively, massively missing out on, on you know, the artistic vision that the director of whatever, you know, whatever content it is you're watching there, you're really missing out there, especially if it's a, you know, a very high budget movie or a very expensive video game that you're playing, you're not getting the real image. Next up on the list, we have QLED. This is Samsung's attempt. So this is Quantum LED. Uh, this enables basically a television set to be brighter than an OLED panel. There are benefits to this. It doesn't get burn in, but there are drawbacks. It doesn't have true black. And the reason why is that QLED TVs still require an LED. Uh, therefore, they still need a backlight. They still don't have self-illuminating pixels. They still work um, by having the LEDs on at all times. So when the screen fades to black, you're not really seeing true black. Uh, they do enable the feature to have, you know, extremely vivid colors because they have a massive peak bright, uh, brightness in nits, uh, far brighter than OLED. I believe it's two or three times brighter than OLED, the maximum brightness they can reach. So uh, QLED is definitely a TV for anyone who wants to have a super bright image. Micro LED, I would recommend one of these devices right now. They're probably the main competitor to OLED. Um, they have benefits to OLED. For, for example, they're able to achieve a higher nits brightness. Uh, and also they use the same technology as OLED, so they have uh, the ability to be able to self-illuminate the pixels, so you're not getting the, um, you know, the, the dirty screen effect or shadows or anything like that, and you are going to see true blacks. So the drawbacks, just very, very expensive. There's not that many on the market right now. If you can pick one up for a cheap price in a couple of years when they start to go down, definitely get yourself one of those. Full array LED. This again, new technology. Sony have just started doing these types of TVs and so have Samsung. Um, you've got to look out for these ones. So these are LED TVs. So the same as the old conventional LED TVs that we used to have, um, but they don't have edge lit uh, LEDs on the side uh, where the backlight goes. So you don't have um, reflections or uh, shadows coming in on your main image you do not get the dirty screen effect which you get on all led monitors um, these types of monitors you know full array leds these are the kind of things that pc gamers will want to use you won't want to be a television user and have a giant screen that's full array um, you'll only really want to use this on a, a smaller pc monitor and the reason why full array leds they have to use a feature called local dimming oled tvs can self-illuminate their pixels full array can't so OLED, they can control their own pixel clusters and with full array, they have to use the feature local dimming. Local dimming enables the pixels to sort of get an idea roughly of where the main focus is um, and dim individual pixels dependent on where it thinks the main subject is. That intelligence, the artificial intelligence in the TV or the monitor might not be so great. It might not do what you want it to do. Therefore, I wouldn't recommend it, but it is better than LED technology still. Okay, so here we go into a different range where Samsung have decided to frustrate the entire market and name everything a completely different name just to be difficult. Um, so Samsung have Neo QLED and what this is, is it's a normal TV. It's just mini LED. For some reason, Samsung decided to call it Neo. Um, and we have Quantum Dot, which is exactly the same as OLED. Um, Samsung have put an answer to this in their own brand by basically putting a blue screen in front of the um, the actual display itself. It's a sub layer of glass that's blue. Now what this enables the display to do is to have OLED benefits of self illuminating pixels, but the blue layer in the middle tries to enable the pixels to be brighter. So this is Samsung's answer to uh, dimly lit OLED screens. Other features you're gonna wanna absolutely pay attention to, HDR, this stands for high dynamic range. So HDR comes in many different variations and forms. Uh, the most commonly accepted one is HDR10, HDR10+. Plus. There are other variations out there like Dolby Vision. These are not as good. Dolby Vision has darker colors because it tries to make things look more cinematic. Okay, So if you're using a games console or uh, you're watching Netflix and they say they support Dolby Vision, turn it off. The only way you would ever want to use Dolby Vision if you're an absolute film geek and you want to watch everything in real cinematic color. For everything else, video games, you want your colors to pop nice and brightly. HDR10 Plus is the one you want to use, and you're probably going to end up disabling Dolby Vision on your TV anyway. 
Another absolute must at the moment on the market, HDMI 2.1. So you want to use HDMI 2.1 because it comes with ALLM, auto low latency mode, and VRR, variable refresh rate. So variable refresh rate is absolutely key for gamers, especially console gamers. This enables the TV to be able to synchronize its frame rate with that of the output device. So let's just say, for example, you're running a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X at 120 frames per second, and you want to be able to get no uh, stuttering or um, screen tearing, then variable refresh rate is what's going to enable that as it makes sure everything's all synchronized and matched up perfectly. Um, sometimes you can run a video game in 120 frames per second. Your TV can be set to 120 frames per second. But then, the, you know, the video games under uh, stress and pressure, uh, especially in a scene where there's a lot going on um, on the image, and it can drop down to 90 or 80 or whatever frames per second. And that can cause it to fall out of sync with the TV uh, and the console. Then you will get something called screen tearing. And I've put a picture on the screen right now so you can see what that looks like. Auto low latency mode, I won't talk too much about this one. This one's kind of obvious. It just enables your TV to automatically go into a low latency mode whenever it's switched to game mode on the TV. Uh, your TV can detect whenever you're playing a game and turn that feature on automatically so you get the lowest possible latency. Now, the next up is the Hertz refresh rate of the TV. You're going to absolutely want to go for something that's 144 or 120 Hertz refresh rate. Um, now, the reason why is this basically means the frames per second that your TV, the maximum frames per second that it will be able to output. Uh, nowadays, the video games are moving from 30 and 60 frames per second to 120 as a maximum uh, output. So you're going to want this as a, you know, as a standard for your TV if you want to progress into the future for games. OK, so next up is the resolution of the TV itself. We don't want anything 720p or 1080p. 720p came in 1998, 1080p came in 2007, 4K has been available now for many years already, 8K is just around the corner, we don't want to choose any older resolutions, we want to future proof ourselves in the decision that we're going, so we want to go 8K or 4K, 4K now is the gold standard for televisions, most of them by default are 4K, there are still 1080p ones on the market, but if you care at all about your resolution and sharpness and how good the image quality is overall, you want to go for a minimum of 4K. The final thing I wanted to touch upon today, guys, is called motion interpolation or black frame insertion. So motion interpolation is a feature that takes the current frame of your shot and the next frame of your shot and puts those two together to analyze the scene to make an assumed image that should go between those to make your footage even smoother than it should be. Black frame insertion is when a TV creates a fake black frame to insert in the middle of two shots, faking and tricking the TV into making it look smoother than it actually is. Sony has used motion interpolation in their TV range for at least the last 10 years. Motion interpolation is a great feature by Sony, and this is why their TVs cost a higher price tag as they have a really intelligent chipset within the TV that allows motion interpolation. Other brands like LG and Samsung just use black frame insertion, resulting in the lower price tag with off-brand names like Auto Motion Plus or Picture Clarity. Um, so turn all those features off, guys. They're making your TV look unnatural. Um, smooth motion is something you want to turn off on daytime TV. It can lead to something called the soap opera effect. If you don't know what that is, guys, uh, just quickly Google it. The soap opera effect is making TV that should be filmed in 24 frames a second look like 60 frames per second, and it looks really unnatural. On the Samsung support website, it actually suggests to turn picture clarity or auto motion plus off and turn those settings off as it causes the soap opera effect when watching TV at 24 frames per second and it's trying to adjust that and fix it to make it look smoother than it actually is. Um, so that's pretty much it for today, guys. You know, we've gone through a lot of different features. Um, hope this helps in terms of, you know, your, your shopping out for a new TV. There are far too many things out there, in my opinion, and they've overcomplicated this industry massively. Um, I look forward to a day where, you know, there's just one type of TV that's superior, and we all just, you know, all the companies get along, um, but that's never going to happen. You know, they're constantly going to be battling it out. So uh, happy shopping, guys.